a tribunal sitting in Adoe Kiti, the Kiti state capital, has nullified a petition filed by Shegunoni of the Social Democratic Party against the declaration of Biodun Oyebanji of the All Progressives Congress as the winner of the June 18, 2022 governorship election in the state. Oni and the Social Democratic Party were the first and second petitioners in the petition, and the respondents were Kiti state governor Biodun Oyebanji, the All Progressives Congress, Yobe state governor Maimala Buni in his capacity as chairman of APC Caretaker Extraordinary Planning Convention and Committee, the Independent National Electoral Committee and the Ekiti State Deputy Governor Monisha De Afuye. Now, Arise analyst Kayode Otitoju joins us to take a close look at possible implications of this verdict on the ever-changing dynamics of Ekiti State politics and what to, to what extent it can go to enrich the country's jurisprudence. G great to have you. Welcome to the show. And I'm always excited to speak about your home state. Uh, <laughs> just from the top, though, do you feel justice has been served? Well, the court rightly or wrongly we have to abide by their pronouncement uh, where most especially when it is difficult for us to you know uh, prove some things um, there are some hidden facts that uh, you know were covered up but what comes to the public is the judgment. And uh, the judges we always predicate their pronunciation, uh, their pronouncement on uh, facts of the case and evidence. So I think so far so good. The, the, the tribunal have been able to base the judgment on Proven, you know, uh, evidence. Uh, evidence like when they said the deputy governor uh, Monisa de Afuye did not have, uh, you know, uh, school cert or the school cert certificate was forged. You know, the the tribunal said that actually uh, the, that was not proven. Was you know by the uh, appellant, then um, area of uh, corruption. They said it was uh, not uh, proven, and uh, again, whether the the election was carried out according to the law. They said that actually no evidence of violation of the, the 1999 Constitution or the uh, Electoral Act 2022. But I was on ground then. So I know, you know, there were some things that uh, either were not made clear to the court or the court just, you know, decided to this judgment, you know, on what they think should be okay. Um, now, is there any basis for appeal? Well, since they said uh, the certificate uh, forgery was uh, not proved, and uh, I know, I, uh, I know why they didn't cooperate. cooperate with the appellant, but the point is, it was improved because why didn't cooperate with the appellant. So whether if they go to appeal, they will now get, you know, why, uh, you know, uh, uh, cooperation. I don't know, but is the appeal really necessary? I will say no, because uh, when you go to court of appeal they always base their own exercise on the decision at the lower court, which is the, either the tribunal or the high court. And uh, since high court has made all this pronouncement, 
and they base their pronouncement in, on, you know, dogmatic, you know, uh, uh, examination of what the appellant put, you know, uh, on the table. Uh, it may be difficult for a uh, court of appeal to do otherwise. Um, and once the court of appeal, you know, doesn't uh, allow new, new uh, um, uh, things to be brought, you know, for consideration, okay, then if when you get to uh, Supreme Court, it will still be the same thing. Um, so I would have suggested as an indigent and a stakeholder that the uh, engineer check money should just uh, leave it and uh, so that we can move forward. Um, my experience with the courts such that uh, at times what is right is not what is uh, gotten from the court. And you should just know that actually until our judiciary is well developed and uh, when our judiciary will be unpredictable, it's then that we can say we want to follow things to a logical condition. But right now, our judiciary, to some extent, is predictable. If you are against government, uh -huh, you are doing something against government, and you are an individual, or you don't have deep pocket, just know the judgment will be predictable. Okay? But in developed countries and whatever, even in uh, what happened in uh, uh, you can't, no, it was Kenya. It? in Kenya. Yeah. Yeah. We know that yeah. actually until the pronouncement, the pronouncement was, <clears throat> was unpredictable. So it's when we rise to that level where when you go to court in the day of judgment and you you can't say oh this is where it will go then that means we have developed so i would say let's rally around all of us anybody that is offended along the process like i know during the process of this election i have offended so many people i personally like I offended uh, John Kyle the fire, me, the governor of Ekiti, you know, either on mass media in the Kitty or even here. Let's all of us forget all those things and rally around and make Ekiti a good place. Why? Because if we allow uh, Uyibanji to work and we collaborate with him, this will be the first time that a candidate of the same party will be succeeding the candidate of of government or previous you know uh, party right from 1999 during um, uh, what's the name the first governor of uh, Ekiti State that's uh, the current minister of industry uh, Adebayo. Okay, he was AD. He was succeeded by Fayoshe of PDP. Fayoshe was succeeded by, uh, you know, this will be the first time. And uh, that's what we give room for continuity and development. Uh, in my article in this day of 11th April this year, I said that, okay, if Oyebanji could win election, by that time I was still with uh, APC. If we now, I think I've, I'm done with uh, political parties or partisan politics. It's frustrating. A straight man may find it difficult to, to know. To, <laughs> I to, love that you say a straight yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I said, if Oyebanji could become the candidate and if he could win election and APC succeeding APC that there will be room for you know 
uh, development, um, growth and development. Now that the court has affirmed, you know, Yebanji as the legitimate uh, governor, let's all of us support him and see how, you know, he can, you know, leverage on the development of his uh, uh, predecessor. Uh, so th this is what I feel. Okay, uh, and of course, this this definitely means a lot to you because, as mentioned earlier, this is your, you know, state of your hometown. Um, truth be told, the issues that were highlighted by Shegwoni, you know, in terms of um, um, Oyebanji emerging as a candidate to begin with, and also vote buying, even if we, other other things can be proved, one thing that happened that we know for certain happened was vote buying. That was apparent. It was reported by a correspondence and. And people on ground, even INEC, acknowledged that that happened. So my, even if you, you rally around Oyebanji regarding this case, letting bygones be bygones, I'm concerned about how about the bigger picture, because you said until the judicial system becomes unpredictable, the expectation might not be something that's favorable. What does this mean for the general elections? If, for instance, there are I don't want to, you know, um, jinx it. If, for instance, we have similar cases of what we saw in Ikiti transpire during the general elections and the judicial system can't be trusted, what does this mean? It still remains a big hurdle for Nigeria as a country because the pre uh, the, our judiciary is still predictable. You can say if Let's say, say, let's say uh, there is a tie eh, between, say, APC and PDP, and there is room for us to go to court, okay? One can predict that it will be APC. Why? Because they are in government. We shouldn't be. It should be unpredictable. Things should be left to you know, probity and sincerity and fairness. But in Nigeria, it is not so. There was a time, sorry, there was a time I had case with a legal state and a big man, you know. The big man wanted to take my land and add it to his own. So I took him to court and I joined legal state who allocated to both of us. So, but because I joined Lagos State, everybody was thinking, yes, I will lose the case because I'm taking Lagos State to court. But uh, to my surprise, I'm telling you, Justice Jumake Pedro, I remember the name, who is, and can I say, someone who, who collects his salary or her salary from Lagos State, and which means one should be expecting her to do. She said, there is a letter of allocation, there is a development permit, so Otitoju is the owner of the land. I'm telling you, until it was pronounced, the expectation was, I will lose the case. Okay? If he wants to base it on my experience, he can go ahead. But to me, there is no need. He's an elder statesman. We contributed money to finance his election because I was gunning for senatorial. Okay? But I'm saying, as a stakeholder, there is no... More so that Oyebanji is a fine person is someone that really grew with the, with the system. The first governor, Niyi um, Adebayo, okay, Oyebanji was an uh, advisor to him. That's as far back as 1999. Okay. And he has been in the system. He even transmuted from secretary to the government to become governor. So he's someone that knows the system. Right. Let us all support him. Well, 
on that note, uh, I suppose we'll continue looking at the power of incumbency and its impact on the judiciary. But thank you for digging deep into this issue for us. Kayode Otsutoji, a Rise News analyst, thank you so much. Thank you.